Um, hello and welcome and thank you for joining us today. I am Jeremy Hollow and I'm the founder and the MD of Listen and Learn Research. And I'm lucky enough to be your guide for the next 30 minutes or so as we explore this whole new world of post-COVID life. First off, just a bit of housekeeping. Uh, we are recording the session, so we're going to send it around afterwards. And all of the things that we're going to talk about today are based on some work that my team have been uh, busy on. And we'll send that report around as well, sort of early time next week. As I said, probably about 30 minutes of, of discussion, and then there's going to be time for a Q&A at the end. So please let me know if you have any questions. First off, I'm really excited to share this work. I've been watching the team as they've been sort of scoping it out and developing it and building our analysis over the last um, few weeks, and it, I really find it fascinating. Um, what's the point of today? Well, we want to help you leave really with this bit of understanding of how to talk to people as we go through this new, really quite tumultuous period of change in people's lives. We want to give you some ideas on where to start these conversations and give you a bit of an idea of where some of the creative possibilities are that are going to come to life as we sort of enter this new stage. So why do we set out to do this work? Well, if it's going to be this month, if it's going to be next month, at some point lockdown is going to end. The doors of life will then start to open again. And I don't know about you, but I just felt that most brands were a bit too slow to respond the first time around. I think we're all washing our hands like crazy for six months and then Carex comes out with their advert. It just felt it was too slow. And I understand why it was really difficult. Everything got put up in the air, but we were too slow. People needed help and we were too slow. But that's not, to, we know what's happening now. We can see it. And so we have an opportunity to get this right. But it has to come from this idea that there's not going to be one size fits all. People are complicated. Life is complex. And so in order to get it right, in order to talk to people who have different needs, who have different understandings, who have come from different backgrounds, we need to understand them better. The job of this work is to really kind of show you where we think there is creative potential in different parts of life for different audiences come as we enter this, this new period. And really it's about to answer this question, how can you be talking to these people in a way that they're gonna to want to listen and want to understand and engage with you? I don't know about you, but I really like to dip my feet in the ocean. I love that feeling when you've sort of rolled up your trousers and you've taken your shoes and socks off and you stand and you can feel the water just lapping around your feet. And there's something about this as the waves sort of are lapping around and then you feel it start to pull back. You can, feel, you can hear the noise as the water pulls back through the shingle. You can feel it in your feet as the water rushes through and you feel, you feel your feet sort of just sink into the sand, the sand in between your feet. I've heard stories of when there's a tsunami that actually the tide rolls back for miles and miles and miles. And for me, COVID is this. We've gone through this experience where life as normal has suddenly been pulled away from us. In this big withdrawal of the waters of life, everything got taken away from us. Life changed dramatically. And now we've got this bit where actually life is about to come crashing back in. The wave of life is about to return. And some people are prepared that they've got their surfboards are waxed, they're in the water, they're ready to go. But we know that that's not everyone and that a lot of people might be struggling. And these are the people that are gonna be tumbled around in the surf as these waves of life crash back in. So the idea about this is to really understand, okay, what is gonna happen next to people? Something really important to sort of base everything on and just to keep in mind as we go through this work is that we've all had a really different COVID. Some of us have been bored out of our minds. So bored, in fact, that cleaning has become a hobby. Some of us have been just intensely busy. Some of us had no symptoms whatsoever, didn't come anywhere near us. Other people have lost their lives, lost loved ones, have been deeply affected. People have lost jobs. Other people are just incredibly, incredibly busy at work. We've seen businesses shutter up and get lost while others have thrived. We're entering a massive period of change. The dice will be rolled, the cards will be reshuffled and we need to know what to do and to enable us and brands that we work with to act quickly enough. And as I said, we know it's coming. People didn't press pause when COVID stopped. We adapted, we moved on. It's been 18 months, life has changed. Now we're at another inflection point. Things are likely to change again. 
So what can we as brands do to be there for the people that matter to us? So what can brands do? Well, we try to answer that question and we turn to social media data to sort of help us. After all, people don't talk to each other in the same way that they talk to researchers. And so listening to these conversations in social media is a way of us understanding how life is changing for people, what they might be scared about, what they might be worried about, what they might be excited about. And you might think that depending on your position, lockdown is going to be, when it finishes, it's going to be brilliant. You'll be able to go out, have the time of your life. But we know that that's not true for everyone. In fact, the two samples of the data we looked at were pretty evenly split. What we did is we looked at, we found two forces that are really occurring along a continuum. We have those people, as I mentioned, that are being pushed forward by their excitement. They're so ready for lockdown to finish and to get back out into the world. So you've got those people on one end of the spectrum. And then right across on the other, you've got another set of people who are being pulled back by their anxiety and their fear about what's to come. So this is our continuum, pushed forward by excitement or pulled back by anxiety. And I think pretty much all of us are, are on one place on that or another. Then those, that continuum plays out across sort of three areas of life. The first one of those is about ourselves. It's me, myself and I. The second one concerns our friends and our family. And the final one is all about how we interact with the wider world. I'm going to have a look at each of those in turn. So let's look at these first areas and these first areas of where we think there is creative potential. The idea of me, myself and I. And what can brands do? How can they find potential in how we feel? We're going to talk through that and I'm going to introduce you to a couple of friends of mine. Pandemic Pam and Eager Head. Now the idea of a post-COVID life creates really powerful emotions among people. So when they're thinking about it and they're talking about it, their emotional reactions are very, very strong, very acute. On our anxious side, the feelings that people are having is a sense of acute fear. There's a panic, a desperation, an insecurity. People are worried, a sense of dread and this prevailing sense of gloom. And amongst this crowd are those people that have adapted to COVID. And now their fear is actually about going back to normal. But then on our other side, our excited, and actually, interestingly, this group, the me, myself and I, tend to be a bit more subdued, almost as if they can't believe it's going to be possible. But when they do express their emotions, it's about hope, it's about eagerness, it's anticipation, this desire for liberation, this feeling that it might be possible, that things might change. So if you think about our anxious crew, we're going to talk about four drivers, four ideas four things that are happening to people that we think lend themselves naturally to sort of four creative possibilities that your creative teams can work with to think about how to talk to these people. The first of these is really about the fear of the unknown. And this speaks to this idea that COVID has been evolving, creating lots of uncertainty. The level, the playing field is far but level. Things have changed all the time. And this actual doubt and uncertainty about when will it actually be over? The second idea we had here was this notion of post-COVID stress disorder. And we're not medical experts, it's not a thing that we're coining, but we're seeing a lot of people who it's just all been too much. They've had enough, they're done, it's stressful, everything is triggering bad reactions to them. The third idea that we've got here is this idea that people are not ready. They feel like they're being pushed too far and too fast. They're not acclimatized to it. They need more time to get used to just the idea of going back to work or, or freedoms or bumping into other people. They're not ready. And the last idea, which is personified by Pandemic Pam, is actually there's a group of people who prefer this newer version of themselves. They've come to terms with it, they've adapted. Actually, in reflection, they enjoy this part of themselves more than they ever did before. So let's look at Pandemic Pam a little bit more. Pandemic Pam is scared. She doesn't feel ready to go back to normal. When she heard Boris's roadmap for getting out of the pandemic, her heart sank. She's had a tough year. The breaks of life were applied really hard and she took it seriously. She's lost people close to her and homeschooling left her feeling drained and exhausted. Mentally, she still feels on high alert. When will it actually be over? But she's also noticed a positive change in her family over the last year. With four school-aged boys, all in sports, she always was late. She was always losing things. She always felt panicked. 
However, now she's noticed that her son with autism is less anxious now, and there is no family planned socializing to sort of distract. And they've all got to spend more time together as a family. Before her husband did the commute into London and often wasn't at home until well after the kids had gone to bed. However, now her husband's work is suggesting he comes back to the office and it just seems too much, much too soon. What if he brings COVID home? Is he ready to go back to normal? Let's flip to the other side. Let's look at what people are getting excited about. And on here again, four ideas, four creative opportunities. The first idea I wanted to share is this idea of running free. We've got no rules. There's this growing sense of excitement that we're going to have to be able to choose for ourselves and, and make decisions on the fly. That is just amazing. From coming from a life where everything has to be planned to the detail, we can actually just step aside and just be and just do. The second idea we came across was this idea of life in focus. When every day is the same, you can't go out, you can't do anything, you're stuck at home. The edges of life get blurred. People actually crave definition. We like a beginning, a middle and an end. We want a Saturday night that's a proper Saturday night. The third idea to share is around deleting the apps. And we've all accumulated these apps and the trappings of COVID over the last 18 months. And wouldn't it be great to just delete that app, get rid of it, signal a new part of life is about to start? The final idea is really around an appreciation of the simple things in life that have been denied, which when lockdown finishes, won't be, and you'll be able to do them again. And that's just taking walks, enjoying things, going to museums, going to libraries, sitting, being, enjoying. Let's meet Eager Red. And I like Eager Red, had a wife, his baby had a wife during the pandemic. And the idea of being free from lockdown restrictions is getting him really excited. He just can't wait to strap on the baby Bjorn and show his little girl the world. The first thing on the list is a little train shop in the centre of town. It's the small, simple pleasures of the outside world that he's not been able to show her yet that he can't wait to do. His wife is still grabbing her phone for COVID stat updates, but Ed, well, he's ready to move on. He's booked a babysitter and is planning a surprise inside dining experience for their seventh anniversary. There's going to be no talking about COVID cases or vaccination rates. And after the meal, yeah, who knows what they'll end up doing. He's looking forward to a Saturday night that's a proper Saturday night. Something that's full of potential and possibility, not Zoom calls dressed up as fun. But maybe first, he could get rid of the mullet his wife gave him during the pandemic. So as we've seen, the easing of lockdown is gonna have a profound impact on how people feel, what they think and what they do and how they act towards themselves. And then from that period of change, I think comes opportunity for brands to be there for people as they resist, adapt or embrace this next chapter. So where do we think the creative potential is? How can we talk to pandemic Pam? Well, here are some questions to get you started. How can you create experiences for Pam that helps her respect, that respects their perspective? that it's okay to feel the way that they do and that they're not alone in that and that other people are feeling the same way as they are. And then how can you help those that are emerging from their COVID cocoons, their eyes blinded by the sudden light and frenetic activity? And for the eager eds, how can you help them capture this joy of freedom? How can you help them see that it's out there and reach it and embrace it? How can you help them see the desire to be who they want to be in the way that they want to do it? And then how can you make Saturday night feel special again? We're going to step away from the individual. We're going to start thinking about our second area of creativity, which is really around friends and family. And I'm going to introduce you to another two friends of mine, Kiljoy Karen and Digital Dad. When we look to how people were feeling about friends and family in the context of, of lockdown ending, on the side of those who are anxious, the emotions that we're seeing here were about sadness and regret, agitation, they felt nervous, anxious, panicked and scared. The end of lockdown signifies or is a marker and it's a focal point that makes them reflect on what it is that they've lost. There's also this idea that we're out of practice and that we've lost our social muscle. On the other side, the excited, well, they're jubilant, they're eager, they're playful, they're nostalgic in a good way. 
They're overcome with emotions and excitement and they're affectionate. I think of it like this kettle of boiling, ready, bumbling water, ready to boil over. They're ready to do something completely unplanned. And what they want to make these connections with people because they know that these physical connections are what makes them feel alive, what makes life feel real to them. Let's have a look at each of those in turn. So again, focusing on the anxious side of the continuum, we've got another four ideas and our four sort of areas of creative possibility. The first of this is the idea of there's barriers to pleasure. So things, this is, it comes from this idea that people think that things aren't really changing. You still need to wear a face mask out. You still need to book everything. When you go to a restaurant, the tables are really far spread out. They don't believe that everyone's taking the vaccine. There's still these doubts. And there's also, and these doubts become barriers to them enjoying the potential and the drive their fear. There's also in this perception, another barrier around what was lost can't really be refound. There's this regret and this nostalgia and this, this kind of like um, this feeling that they can't get it back. The second idea to share is the sort of the sense of people have been worn out. They're depleted. Their optimism is spent. They've made too many failed plans. They can't be bothered to book the holiday again for the 15th time, only for it not to work. It's just had enough. The third idea here is this idea of just not being ready. They feel like they've lost the ability to be normal. The idea of returning to be with everyone else just fills them with dread. They've lost their social muscle. They don't have the stamina to get back in. And then the final idea here is this ever-present danger, the danger of catching COVID and of bringing that back into, them, in, in, into their family. So let's meet Killjoy Karen. Now, Killjoy Karen is really struggling to come out of her shell. Her dear friend Anne has invited her to lunch, which sounds amazing. And after a bit of coaxing, she's relented. She's suggesting that they meet up at the place nearby. That's the one that has that delicious carrot cake that Karen loves. They get there and it turns out it's shut permanently. And the place that Anne suggests as an alternative is really cozy, but like not in a good cozy, in a tight, cramped kind of cozy. In fact, the tables are gonna be super close to each other. And Karen's wondering, is it okay to still wear a mask when you're not eating? What, what, what are the rules now? And now she's kind of started to second guess her decision to go at all. In fact, the more she thinks about it, the more overwhelmed she becomes. Anne wants more friends to join them. Some of these people Karen hasn't spoken to since this all began. Actually, Karen hasn't spoken to anyone in so long. She's unsure what to talk about except COVID and, well, now needing to find another place with the best carrot cake. On the other side, we've got this excitement. And again, four ideas, four creative possibilities. And the first idea to share is this idea of being really hungry for connection. We've counted the days, the weeks, the months until we can actually see people again. And the idea that that's gonna end is just intoxicating. We need to reconnect, that we need to give people a proper hug. We miss the buzz of being around and near people. The second idea to share is this idea of craving spontaneity. We've had enough of planning, we're done with it, it's over. There's something really deeply exciting about the unknown. Unsurprising things are what makes life interesting. You can plan a night out, but the best night out that you have are the ones where something unusual happens. We crave that idea that we can just step into the unknown and find out and let life take us with it. The third idea I wanted to share is this idea of spreading your wings, that we are ready to be somewhere else, to do other things. We wanna spread our wings again. We wanna travel, we wanna see the world. We wanna step out beyond the, 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 the narrow confines of where we've been. And the last idea to share is this concept of, I can't wait to, and it can be lots of different things, but this is a powerful nostalgia. Like for me, there's a restaurant in Soho called Kiln, which I just can't wait to get back to. It could be that, it's a longed for treat, could be carrot cake, could be a cheeky Nando's, but it's this idea that something's been taken, but you're about to have that chance to get, get it back again. So let's meet Digital Dad. Well, for the past 14 months, he's only spoken to his kids and grandkids via WhatsApp and Zoom. His wife died of cancer a few years ago, and so he lives alone now. He just wants to hold and kiss the newest member of his family, his little grandson. 
and his old mate Jack just called and asked if he'd like to go and meet up with the fellas. And he said, yes, before he could even finish this sentence, he's like, let's go. A nice pint done properly. He could really go for that. It's been so long since he's had a proper pint with Jack. And when it's safe to do so, he'd really like to plan a trip to Lisbon to be somewhere completely different and to do something completely different. Nancy and he used to love going there together. He's thinking maybe he could convince his daughter that a nice big family holiday is in order. He just can't wait and he's excited by this idea of stepping out of the villa and being surrounded by the buzz of the family and the noise of all those grandkids splashing in the pool. Again, we've seen this easing of lockdown is gonna have a profound effect. So what can we do when people are thinking about their friends and their family? Where is the creative potential? Again, some questions to get you started about how you can talk to Kildra Karen. What can you do as a brand to let them know that it's okay to feel the way that they do? What can you do to help them change the narrative from what have we lost to what have we achieved and then how can we move on? What can you do to help them find a new path to tread? And when it comes to our digital dads, what can you do to make it easy for people to know where they stand? What can you do in them to help them feel safe? And then what can you do to help people be spontaneous, to be flexible and to be up for anything adventurous that comes their way? Okay, it's time to look at our third and final area of, of creative potential, basically the wider world, which is school and work, isn't it really? And we're gonna introduce you to Ni Nervous Naomi and to Happy Harrison. The emotions around this part are around of the anxious side, this intense pressure. And bear in mind that this is, they don't have their friends and family to support them when they go back to school or back to work. So it's more intense, they're more alone. And we're getting people feeling resentful about being made to go back, nervous about what's gonna happen, insecure, scared, and to some point exasperated. People feel inadequate. They feel that they don't have the right skills or, or something about the way that they look or the way that they, they act that they've lost. And there's another voice here, which actually really don't want to change. They're really happy, they've adapted, they've moved on. This idea of returning, of going back, just does nothing for them. But then on the other side, our excited, our eager people, oh boy, they're so excited. They just want to get back because it makes them feel more fulfilled. It makes them feel appreciated. It makes them feel compassion towards everyone else. They've had enough of working from home. They miss the banter. They need to get back. Again, we'll start with the anxious. We've got four ideas, four creative possibilities for you to think about. The first one, the first idea to share is this idea of we've got it covered. And this is a group of people who are fully adapted to working from home. They feel they're more productive. They feel their work-life balance is much better. And to be honest, they don't wanna go back to the way it was before. They're dreading giving all this up. The second idea here is around the value equation. And because we've all been made to work from home or we haven't been able to get into work, or we haven't had work, it's made us think about the choices that we, were, that we had to make before and that now could be choices. So do I spend two hours commuting into town each way? What do I could do with that four hours? I've been enjoying that four hours. Do I need to do four days for a round trip for a conference? People are starting to build, build this into in this whole, it's becoming more of a, of a value equation that people are thinking about. The third idea here is around social dread. And this comes from just a sense that people have become insecure and have become and feel inadequate about their ability to reintegrate into a noisier, more rushed old world. The final idea is around Russian roulette. The more times you go out, the more times you go on a tube, the more times you take public transport, the more time you integrate with people, the more chances you are to get COVID. If there's one bullet and you have to click the trigger six times, eventually you're gonna get shot. So that's a bit of a morbid met metaphor. Um, okay, so let's have a meet nervous Naomi. Well, she got an email from work yesterday. She's got two more weeks before she's expected, no, demanded to return to the office now that she's had her second vaccine. She didn't feel comfortable saying anything on the phone, but she's not really happy about it. For her, it just feels too soon. She doesn't really think that her office is COVID secure. Uh, there's there 70 people on her floor and 14 in the open office she works in. She's forgotten what to talk about and how to greet people. 
a handshake's a thing. Are we still doing that? Are we doing the elbow bump? Can she even remember how to do a job amongst other people? Plus the idea of commuting on the tube and the underground with all those people is just like, no, thank you. She thinks back to her work-life balance and how it was so much better when she was working from home. She feels more productive. And on the other side, she's starting to worry about whether she can get back into shape in two weeks. When she tried on one of her skirts the other day, the buttons felt pretty tight and she thinks she may have gone up a size. Flip side, let's look at the potential and excitement. What's happening in this side? Well, again, four ideas, four creative opportunities. And the first idea to share is, just, is the office open yet? People can't wait to get back. They are all in. It's like they've missed it so much that they're just so ready to go. The next idea is this concept about missed connections. And here people are excited because they want to be with people again. It's being part of a collective, something that's more than themselves, being part of the community of work or a school or a college or wherever they are, the buzz, the sense of being with people. The third idea is this, just being able to get back to work. And people haven't been able to work or have lost their jobs. So the idea of being able to work again is amazing. It's profound. It gives them they've missed this feeling of being valued and of needed and of fitting in and of contributing. And this is such a powerful driver of our self-esteem and our belief. The last idea I want to share here is just around a desire to keep it flexible, which we feel at both ends of the spectrum. So people have reevaluated how they work and they're really looking for a more blended a more flexible working environment that respects the realities of working from home. So let's meet our final character, Happy Harrison. Now Harrison got a call from the restaurant and it looks like things are finally opening up again soon. He is so relieved he got that call. He'd only been hired a few months before the pandemic began and he wasn't even sure if there was still a job waiting for him. The day he got the job at his first Michelin star place, he was like over the moon. And Hudson had to, in the pandemic, he had to move back in with his parents when it all started. Bit of a come down. And he's really now looking forward to earning money again and taking his life off pause. Now's the time he's going to start sharpening in his knives and getting ready again. And he just can't wait to be in the middle of the craziness again with orders shouted left, right and centre. Actually feeling needed for the first time in a long time. Working shoulder to shoulder with some of the best chefs in the world. For Harrison, reopening just can't come soon enough. So let's think of the last slide around how easy lockdown is going to ease and what kind of a profound effect that's going to have on how people feel and what they're doing. Here's a few ideas of how you can talk to Nervous Naomi. What can you do to ensure that working from home maintains that much sought after flexibility, productivity, and, and you're attracting the right talent pool? What can you do to assure people that it is actually safe to return? What have you done? What can you demonstrate? What can you prove? And what can you do to help people feel that they're not alone, that it's OK, that actually we're all nervous about stepping back into the work party? We all are in the same position. And for happy Harrisons of this world, that the excited don't need any more encouragement. What we need to do is we need to open the doors, we need to keep it safe and we need to let them in. OK, that's it. Life after Covid. We've talked about a continuum with two ends. We feel those people being pulled by the excitement to get back into the world. And the other end, we feel those are being pulled back by their anxiousness and their concerns. And then we've looked across three contexts, how it pans out with me, myself and I, what it means in terms of our friends and family, and then finally implications for our interactions going back to work and back to school. So what can brands do? Well, there's some great examples coming out at the moment, not a lot, but a few. We've got Google's Get Back to What You Love campaign, which is fantastic. It's all about searching for the happier things. And we've got Wrigley's Extra, Get Your Ding Back, which is a bit more, a bit more on the cheeky side and sort of suggests this sort of boundless hedonism where we're all with fresh mouths going around snogging everyone. But what can you do? Well, we want you to work with the ideas that we've talked to today. Take the two sides, take this continuum. Think about where your clients, where your customers are likely to be across that. Have a look at those core behaviours and then apply it to your brand and see where the potential is. 
How are your team going to talk to the pandemic pans of this world? How are you going to appeal to the digital dads that are out there? What can you do? How can you stand out from the crowd? Thank you.